This is the first in a series of videos in which I will be attempting to repair this. As you can see it's an Olympia ESW100 KSR. This is a lot newer than most of the equipment I work on um, but hopefully it should still make quite an interesting um, inspection even if we can't repair it. Uh, how far I go I'm not quite sure yet. This doesn't belong to me. Um, I'm just looking at it for somebody else and uh, he said it's completely dead he has done some work on it i don't know what extent um, that work is but he has switched it on so uh, i'm actually going to power this up and see what it does if you're not familiar with these then really these are electric typewriters with a serial interface so they were kind of used as um, almost like a dumb terminal um, without the monitor they just have the um, the print capability on um, either plain or perforated paper uh, so they're relatively complex inside. I've only worked on a couple of these in the past and um, the repairs were fairly limited to the power supply so it'll be interesting to see what we find with this. So I'll get it hooked up to the power supply. Uh, we'll power it up and see what it does. I have it hooked up to the bench supply and uh, I've got it set to 240 volts. It is a 240 volt machine. There is some paper partly loaded into this and uh, so we'll try applying power. I've got the mains switch off just run a little bit of current about 20 milliamps and we'll try and power it up and see what it does. Now the owner said it doesn't work at all but um, whether it is completely dead or just doesn't uh, perform any useful functions I'm not quite sure so uh, let's see what happens. Interesting. Oh well, it uh, plays a musical note if nothing else. Uh, obviously it's not doing what it's supposed to. So uh, what we'll do is we'll open it up, we'll pop the cover off, have a look inside. I'm not going to do too much in this video, we'll just um, have a look inside, see what's in there and uh, see if we can spot any obvious damage. Now the owner said there is some damage on the uh, Logic PCB from a leaking battery. so. It'll be interesting to see how extensive that is. Uh, but the first thing I want to do is just get this top cover off. It's got a cartridge in it. I suspect that's dried up. And we'll turn it back on and see if it does anything at all, if it tries to reset itself or if it is just completely dead. Okay, well we do have an internal light. Okay, so pretty much nothing seems to be happening. There's no sign of any activity. Okay, so it appears the processor isn't running properly. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll get the cover off. There's some screws on the underside of this and then the top cover should lift off. So I'll get the cover out of the way and we'll take a peek inside. So that's the first look inside and as you can see it's a fairly simple assembly. We have the printer uh, mechanism, it's fairly standard, there's nothing unusual there. This is one of the kind of daisy wheel type printers and uh, we've got a reasonable quality keyboard nice sturdy base on this very thick steel pressed steel base so it's quite a rigid um, assembly and then the interesting bit is at the back it's a couple of boards um, microprocessor and control so I'll take the remaining screws out turn the unit round and we'll have a closer look at the control board okay I've got the rear board lowered so what we've got here is the power supply and then the logic and control board so this is the, yeah, better the processor board, control board, 
um, we've got the uh, leaking RAM, uh, leaking batteries, this is the RAM, and then these are the control devices for the various steppers. And um, noticed a, an issue straight away. Now, I don't know exactly what uh, faults this may or may not have or what testing has been done on it, uh, how far the owner went with the testing. I've noticed an issue straight away that I don't know if it's because it's been taken apart or was part of the original fault. So I'll power this back up and see if we still have the same fault. I haven't done anything yet other than remove the board. So it's still doing exactly the same thing, but I've noticed this isn't plugged in. It's, it's kind of halfway in, but I suspect it's not in far enough to be making contact. So what I'm going to do is push that all the way in. Okay, and we'll try powering it up again, see what happens. Yep, still, so still the same. Okay, so it's still doing the same thing. Now, looking at some of these devices, they've got incredibly dirty, corroded pins. So I'm just going to pop one of these out and have a closer look at it. It might just be as simple as. Uh, the leads on the ICs need cleaning. Um, there is some obvious damage here, uh, so we'll have to take a closer look at that, test the various supplies. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do is just pull out one of the ICs, we'll have a look at the pins and see if there's any uh, serious corrosion um, deep down in the uh, socket. It might just be that they all need cleaning and it's as simple as that, so we'll try that first. So I've taken one of the ICs out and indeed the pins are fairly badly corroded. So the first step, and I will do uh, this in this video, is uh, clean these up. Uh, I'll do this with all the socketed ICs. It may well be the sockets themselves will need replacing. Um, looking at the type of socket, they are fairly poor uh, once corrosion gets in there. Uh, but I'll try just cleaning the leads on the ICs first and see how far that gets us. So I removed all the socketed ICs and cleaned the pins and uh, we'll try powering it back up, see if it makes any difference. Some of the pins were very badly corroded. Um, not 100% convinced that's what the problem is, but we'll try powering this up and see if it's uh, any different to what it was. Okay, so no, it's still the same. So I'm now going to start focusing on this. I'm, obviously not doing any in-depth fault finding here. Um, we could throw a scope on this and see if the processor is running, uh, if the supplies are correct. I'm just really going through and looking at the uh, the physical uh, damage to this and obviously the uh, obvious place is here. So we've got the two batteries. Um, they might just be completely dead and uh, depending on how the system's designed that could stop the system booting up. So I should remove these uh, shortly. But before we do that, um, I just want to have a look at this uh, connector because it's right underneath where the uh, battery uh, leakage is. And also this is the power connector. So this is where the power comes into the board. Now I don't know what the, to the tone might actually mean something. Unfortunately, I don't have a manual for this. Uh, so I don't know if the continuous tone is actually meant to mean anything in particular or if it's just kind of a uh, a thing it does when it's locked up. But immediately what I can see is those pins are very badly corroded. So what I'm going to try and do is put that back on, we'll power it up, and see if we can make any... Okay, so obviously when I wiggle this about, we get a change in the tone, and when the tone goes away, the power consumption goes up quite significantly. It goes from about 20 milliamps, which is what it is now, uh, up to about 0.4 amps. So something obviously significant is changing, but uh, it does tend to indicate that um, we're not getting proper contact through this connector. 
what I'm going to do is take this off, give it a quick clean. Uh, we might need to change the connector on the board. It may have eaten away all the plating. In fact, I'll probably do that anyway, but just for now, I'm going to try and clean it and see if we can uh, at least get it to, to do something different. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I've cleaned the uh, header on the board. It was very badly corroded. It will need changing, all the plating is gone. Um, but what I'm doing now is just popping each of the connectors or each of the pins out of the plug and just using a bit of IPA to give it a clean. It, as you can see, it's got a thick uh, crusty coating of green gunk on it. So we've got a lot of corrosion on there. That's what comes off the battery. It's got up into this connector. I'll clean as much of this off as I can. We might need to change this connector as well, but uh, as I said for now, I just want to see if we can get uh, any life or any uh, change in behaviour of the machine by doing this. Uh, obviously if the power's not getting through to the main board then um, it's just not going to work the way it should do. So I'll get the rest of these cleaned. Fortunately uh, there aren't too many connectors or too many wires on this connector so um, it shouldn't take too long to hopefully get these uh, to make contact but uh, they will need changing. It's not a long term fix. They'll uh, almost certainly fail fairly quickly. Okay, I've cleaned all the pins on this connector as best as I can. They are now at least making contact. We've got some, what I presume used to be capacitors on the back uh, or behind this connector that have completely disintegrated. I think they're just for noise suppression. I don't think they'll be needed for the board to run, but I will replace those. Um, there is a, a component missing off this. The owner did say that um, a transistor that I he didn't say exactly where it was, just underneath the batteries, but I assume he means in this position there seems to be the remnants of a, a transistor. He did say what type it was. And uh, unfortunately when you get machines that have been worked on already it makes life a bit more difficult, so I don't know exactly which orientation that would have been in. But looking at the pads, I suspect that it was kind of the mirror image of the one that's over here. So what I'm going to do is try connecting or shorting the collector and emitter. I think they may have something to do with the um, the charge control and reset uh, for the um, battery backup, so it might be holding the entire machine in kind of a reset mode. So I'm going to try connecting those together and see if uh, anything changes. So I'm just going to raise the camera so you can see a bit more of the board. And I'll power the machine back up. I'm going to try connecting these two pins together. Okay, you wouldn't have been able to see it, but um, the power consumption went up quite significantly. So I'll point the camera a bit far, uh, further up so you can see, or hopefully see, the, the transformer display. So it's the meter on the left is showing current. I'm not quite sure if that will come out on the camera. For some reason it sometimes doesn't show up. I'm going to power the machine back up and reconnect these and see uh, what happens. Okay, well hopefully you can see the current uh, went up. This is the mains input uh, at 240 volts. It went up to about uh, 250 milliamps. So it's significant increase and it's not just because I'm drawing power by shorting this out. Uh, I also heard a mechanical clunk which I believe is one of the steppers going into its kind of hold mode so it might be that is causing the board to start up so next thing I'm going to do is take the board out and then in the next video we'll replace the missing device and uh, start looking into the actual operation of the processor system. I suspect it's just not starting up properly. Uh, I may also replace this connector, but for now uh, that's it for this video. Next step will be to replace the missing parts.